Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Fly Day to Sim live stream. Today it's the 15th of November 2022, four minutes past five in the evening here in the UK. Back in Microsoft Flight Simulator and trying out another feature of the 40th anniversary update. Uh, Microsoft have added two gliders uh, to the simulator. Gliding is how I actually started my aviation career nearly 20 years ago. Um, in fact, if you look at my Instagram story, I managed to find my uh, original gliding logbook for the British Gliding Association, and uh, I thought we'd return to those roots of, of trying gliders again. Now, I've tried some of the practice gliding flights. We're going to do them all again, the uh, Microsoft Flight Sim lessons on gliding. Um, I haven't done all of them, so some of them will be the, for the first time. Then once we've completed them all, it should only take about 30-45 minutes or so, we're going to go to Cape Town, departing uh, from the small line to the northwest. I can't remember the name uh, off the top of my head now, but it's in the video description. We're then going to fly uh, towards Table Mountain. We're going to hopefully use some ridge lift based off real world conditions. We've got winds from the uh, northwest in Cape Town. We'll be just flying about uh, six hours behind live time, utilizing some thermals, hopefully. Uh, we'll need to because we'll have to get all the way over to Cape Town International Airport. So it should be good fun. I'll be online live. So you must come and join the, in the glider as well. Try and do some gliding with me. It'll be really good fun. Um, who have we got here in chat? Domino Mosina, hope you're doing well. Hello, Captain. Hello, everyone. Daniel B, have you done the winch launch in real life? I've never done winch launch in real life. At the Aero Club I did uh, my gliding, it was all aero type. They didn't have a winch there. Uh, it's quite fun in the, in the sim here. And uh, we'll be seeing that for the first time ever. Uh, Prashnu Subberwell, hope you're doing well. Scott Morgan, nice to see you again here. You're here in the last live stream too. John Franco, a good... Uh, or cheers from Fort Irwin, California, 9.04 in the morning local time. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Hello, Anthony. Yes, uh, I've seen lots of chicken references. Returning to my roots would technically be returning to Boris and selling chickens. Well done. Uh, Ed Plain, hope you're doing well. And uh, Edo's here too. Hope you're all having a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Now, let's go here to flight training. Now, I've completed half of the glider training. We are going to start from scratch again so you can actually... Uh, see from the uh, sort of scratch what you have to do here so you can look and see I've done the aero tow, the winch launch training, the advanced winch launch training and that's it. We're then going to for the first time do the basic handling, slipping approach and landing, thermal identification and some ridge soaring. These only take about five minutes each before we go over to South Africa for you to join in and have some fun. So let's have a look here at the aero tow. This is what I learned to fly uh, or, or start with gliding seven minutes and we're in the um, the DG1001E uh, going to be towed by a Cessna 172SP. Now, I had some fun with this uh, yesterday, some of the members watching in the members' Discord. Um, if you go somewhere with high density altitude, the Cessna, the tow plane, is also affected by that performance. We were up at sort of 8,000 feet, and the Cessna could barely take off. It was really cool to see that was a uh, model today, but uh, yeah, we're going to have some uh, fun with that. So I'll press fly, and um, there we are. Well, hopefully, none of that will be going on whilst we're being towed. Worthwhile mentioning, look who else is here during the stream. Well, he, oh, he's currently sleeping at the moment. Look at him down there. Oh, hello, buddy. Didn't mean to make you jump. Look, you kind of like half staring at the camera because it's like a little bright white light on it. But Jack is with me at the moment, uh, asleep on his bed here. He's uh, had a nice long walk this morning, so he's nice and tired. Just currently staring at me, wondering who on earth I'm talking to. But uh, there we are. Uh, right, this should be loading in any second now. Here we go. So we're in... Germany, I guess. Erlenhausen, uh, Echo Delta Lima Oscar. And uh, there's the weather, 590 feet. Let's see what the instructor has to say. Welcome to your aero tow training. Done we this already. Paid for a tug up to 3,000 feet and we'll be flying You get all this on the tutorial circuit. flights, I don't like them. When you're ready to release, signal the tow aircraft by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Okay, we'll do that. And what's really cool, when you start waving the uh, rudder, <laughs> watch this guy. It's like he's trying to do a, a, a swimming lesson. So I'm, I'm waving the rudder. Wings level oh, the yeah. <laughs> what's he doing with ground? his hand? Right, let me jump into the uh, cockpit here. The sounds on this are so good. Right, he's powering up. Keep about five feet off the ground until the tug plane takes off, so we don't lift its tail. So I'm keeping wings level here with with Ada on, and obviously you keeping the sense line with the rudder. There we are. We've got a little bit of string there. 
I'll start pulling up now. So we move on. Until the tug lifts off the ground. It's so cool. And what was awesome, I haven't done anything like this since I... Uh, Keep directly behind the tow aircraft at all times. I started gliding 20 years ago. And, vertically. and it, it was just such a, a an amazing... Um, you know, just bring back so many memories, the sounds and the sensation there. So all the speed in this glider, where everything's in kilometres an hour, so I think the little yellow arrow is your kind of best glide speed, your VMD or minimum drag speed, so that's the speed you want to stay at when you're gliding around here. This is just a, an aero tow lesson, so you just got to keep the aeroplane roughly there, uh, which we are doing at the moment. Excellent, you are maintaining a safe position. Oh, she's happy. <laughs> Hopefully I'll beat my high score. Oh yeah, gear up. I forgot this has got gear. Well, the, the aircraft I flew, uh, the Pukats, or whatever it's pronounced, didn't have gear. Now, yeah, gear up. Oops, I don't see where we're going. Thanks! Is he drowning? <laughs> if I was drowning, that's what I'd be doing. <laughs> the little wing walker there. We'll call him Jim. But yeah, all these little movements, and obviously this is preset weather for this tutorial, but when we go to Cape Town, we're going to use live weather. And it looks the wind direction actually affects the updrafts and the downdrafts on the on the uh, downwind side of the mountain. And I've got this amazing scenery for Table uh, Mountain as well, and for Cape Town. I've got the Orbex city packs, but also this freeware scenery. Uh, if you want to go Let's download keep it now. Behind the tug as it turns. Okay. Now I remember my instructor gliding used to show you how to go to different positions, but he said never go low because what that does it drags the tail of the, the tow plane down. The line's got a bit slack here. Oh, that can't be good. Has the line gone slack? No, I don't know. I think it's okay. Oh, yeah, I've got to use the rudder a bit more, I think, in a glider. I'm just, I obviously we don't use the rudder in a 7.3 to coordinate turns. It's a downwash from the Cessna. Uh, oh, dear, I need to stop looking at chat. Hold on, I'm going to bring chat on my second window here. Uh, <laughs> Cessna pilot, please show me where you want to go. Oh, no! <laughs> That's not good. Ah. There we are. Um, now you guys need to decide when we go to Cape Town whether to use the aero tow or the winch launch uh, system as well. The aero tow you can just let it tow you kind of indefinitely, um, but here in the tutorial I think you go to 3,000 feet. Uh, Aaron, were you ever scared you could lose lateral energy whilst gliding? Lack of engine makes me nervous. No, because the, the glide ratios on gliders are phenomenal. Um, you, so basically when, when you're on final approach in this thing you just put the speed brake out and you can basically point the thing. 20, 30 degrees nose down, and it'll hold the speed. So, you know, it's very, it's not, it's not difficult once you know how to, to run out of energy. But lots of people end up doing field landings and cross country flights as well. Three dim Steve. I was only ever a tug pilot. Only flew in a glider once as a passenger. That was a 30 years ago. God, I'm lying. Well, 20 years ago when I started uh, gliding. Hope you're doing well, Lewis Hancock. So we then chat We're as well. We're approaching the designated altitude of 3,000 feet. Upon release, gently turn to the right as the tow aircraft turns left. Okay. Release the cable. Ah, and that sound is awesome. Bye, tow plane. Excellent. Very well done. Thank you. And we'll, we'll go straight to our best... Oh, well, that's it. An A. There you go. An A grade pilot. That's all you need to know. I already passed. Got an A. <laughs> <laughs> that'll do uh, best score as well I think that be, beat my previous best so there we are that's the first lesson there's only a few more to go so that's just demonstrating the aero tow oh, no. my lifting the glider off the ground keeping the wings level I could have done a bit better oh, well but I did maintain a safe position and re my release was sensational so let's go uh, training menu and uh, it's the next one so glider training we've done the aerotow now is the winch launch training let's do this one I failed this when I first attempted it uh, where's the A star <laughs> cheeky <laughs> um Turns out you are a real pilot. Oh, oh no. Counting the, uh, continue the proud owl packet tradition of keeping the tug connected long after takeoff. <laughs> I've never done a winch launch, uh, you know, so I think you hold it up at 45 degrees. But look, they've got all these accurate winch animations and everything, like the little parachute to get the winch down, too. Today, we're going to practice using a winch to launch the DG 1001 into the air. Compared to a tow plane there launch, is, look. a winch will get us airborne much faster, but with a lower release altitude. Once we give the go signal, the winch <laughs> will rapidly accelerate us. 
Be sure to keep the wings level until the glider lifts off. Okay, we'll try my best. When you are ready to release, signal the winch operator by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Right, I'll do that. Moving the rudder now, getting ready for his his arm movements. There he goes. <laughs> He's trying to swim again. Right, this is quite quick. Rotate. And up to 45 degrees or something like that. And then you just sort of let it do its Almost thing. Almost at the top. Level off and when you hear a distinct change of sound from the winch, release the cable. This is how we do a winch launch. I, I think so. It certainly gets the blood pumping and keeps your concentration high. That's it. That, that's lesson number two over. Back to my minimum drag speed. Do I land now? I can't remember now. If you keep flying like that, you'll be we'll right up, up there with the best of them. Very well done. Oh, she's so so much praise. <laughs> there you go. Another another A. Uh, keep them coming, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nine thousand and sixty-six. I didn't do as well as my previous best score though. Points deducted for dropping below or going above the safe airspeed. Ah, disregard. Uh, next. Um, glider training lesson two. Winch launch training advanced. Practice a simulated winch line break. This one was quite cool, actually. You actually end up doing your first uh, uh, circuits, which is pretty cool. So I think they just say break off, break off, or it breaks early or something. So, But yeah, it's really cool to just introduce you to the, the different uh, ways of getting the, the glider in the air. Uh, wind, uh, winch launches are such a rush. Yeah, I'd never had one. We don't need no stinking safe air speeds. <laughs> I'm loving this sim more and more every day. It's just been such a, a trip down memory lane, this has. Right, all again. Welcome to your advanced winch launch training. Right. Keep the wings level, rotate into the climb at the correct moment, and maintain a safe speed and trajectory. A winch launch demands the highest level of awareness and ability to appropriately react as quickly as possible. When you are ready to release, signal the winch operator by moving your rudder left and right a few times. <laughs> I love this. There he goes. <laughs> Is that how they signal in real life? I don't know. Right, there we go. The little string. Cable break. All right. Excellent. You handled that perfectly. Oh. We are too high to land ahead. Turn back and fly alongside right. the runway. I'll put the gear when up. Safe. Turn and line up in preparation to land. So, if I remember rightly, you fly, generally fly around at the best glide speed all day long, and you can trip it out. Uh, and that's this is in kilometers an hour, so we're doing 100 and, 105 kilometers an hour, so at about 60-ish knots. And then the, the great thing about gliding, the, I don't know what the glide ratio on a glider would be like this, about one in one in 50, meaning that for every one kilometre you drop, uh, you fly forwards by 50 kilometres. I think this is one of the most efficient single seat gliders there is as well. Um, and you have water ballast on board too. So you can literally drop just, you know, one kilometre, a thousand metres, and you've travelled 50. So you just position the aeroplane, basically, any attitude you want, and you just, as soon as you pull the speed brakes out, you can just point the nose down, it will hold the speed really nicely. Lewis, this woman loves you. Oh, I think I've got a bit of lift here. But what, what's really cool? You get all these creaking sounds. Yeah, look, look, look. I haven't got the variometer tone thing on, but look, we're getting a little bit of an updraft there. Right, I'm taking a very, I used to do a much longer final, uh, I think, when I was gliding. I'm using the Airbus side stick at the moment. Guess what I've ordered today as well, guys? A Toby Eye Tracker. Looking forward to trying that out. So, look, yeah, I pulled the speed brake out now. And look at that. It, well, it's still accelerating a little bit. I'm a little bit too steep there. I need to drop the gear. I can see here. Gear's down. Yeah, so uh, that was a bit of a pants approach, really. I'm too close and too fast. Ooh, uh, yep. <laughs> Keep the speed brake out the whole time. Well, I'm bouncing my way down. There you go, there's the, the winch. I'll try not to get tangled up with it. Keep the 
things level as long as possible. And I'll try not to smash into the uh, winch truck either. Keep the wings level. Ah, that, look that was a simulated cable break intended to prepare you for flying solo. Well, where's my solo flight? Like that, you'll be right up there with the best I mean, since light tracking, well gotta give me that. <laughs> right, what was that? An A again. Uh, my previous best score was only slightly better. Okay, I'll take that. Right, now this is uncharted territory. Uh, so, training menu. I think we're halfway through the, the training syllabus now as a glider pilot. Um, we've got basic handling now. So this is the... I've not seen this before. This will be the first ever time we've done that. Then we have the slipping approach and landing, thermal identification and ridge soaring. So let's do this one here. It all takes 12 minutes this one. Today's lesson will introduce you to basic controls and instrumentation. You will launch the two-seat high port sailing plane. You'll be in the forward seat, instructors behind, 4,000 feet, maneuvers from Sedona to... Oh, flight begin the air above Sedona in Sedona. Perfect. We'll just follow the, the guidance and see what it does. Well, amazing game, AG. Yeah, we will be doing a helicopter stream as well soon. I have tried them out. First ever time trying a helicopter in a sim. It was good fun. I turned off all the assists as well. Quite like the Bell 407. Alright, here we go. Next. Oh, we're already flying. Today, you'll experience soaring in a glider, what many aviators consider to be the purest form of flight. Oh, I agree with you. Unlike powered aircraft, a glider pilot must adjust altitude to control airspeed. To increase airspeed, push the stick forward. Okay. Pulling back on the stick will lower airspeed. Maintaining constant airspeed in a glider requires the pilot to frequently and carefully adjust stick input and elevator trim. Okay. Let's see how the glider feels at different airspeeds. With gliders, expect a delay of one to two seconds from control input to change in speed. Okay. Let's increase airspeed to 167 kilometers per hour. Gently push the stick forward to pitch the nose down as you observe very specific the speed indicator. At 167 kilometers per hour, pull back gently to maintain speed and trim the elevator so that the glider maintains 167 kilometers per oh, hour about 170, without sorry. pilot input. So let me trim. I'm trimming those down at the moment. Right, well, I think we're re-trimmed at 167. Now let's reduce our airspeed. Bring the glider to 102 kilometers per hour. To reduce airspeed, gently lift the nose by pulling back on the stick. You need less input compared to pushing the stick forward. Right, there's 100. Leading off our airspeed will take a few moments. They're already, mate. <laughs> what was that, 102 or something? Can't remember what you said now. Well, I'm holding 100. Once you're at 102 kilometers 102. per hour, maintain that airspeed at first by stick input, and then adjust trim so no input is necessary. Done that. I'm in trim. Very cool. 102.5698. I'm flying that Zephyr. Please say something though. I've, I've trimmed it already. I've trimmed. Trim is just this very simple cable. You just move back and forth. I've done it. Next. Do I have to do it? Move this manually? Oh, there's 102. Remember some of these missions are balked. I remember doing the IFR mission with you guys in a stream. And it and never finished. It just went, uh, uh, okay. Oh, did she say 100 miles an hour? Uh, 100 miles an hour is 160, but she's... Did they not beta test these? It bugs when you do it too fast. You're ahead of instructions. Oh, great. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just being efficient. <laughs> right, we'll restart it one more time. Oh dear. You're just too... Listen to me. I know. I know. 
<laughs> At least some people have tried it and it knows it bugs. Right, try it one more time. I'll do it a bit slower. Today, experience soaring in a glider. What many aviators consider to be the purest form of flight. Unlike powered aircraft, a glider pilot must adjust altitude to control airspeed. Be nice and slow then. To increase airspeed, push the stick forward. So Pulling cool. back on the stick will lower airspeed. Maintaining constant airspeed in a glider requires the pilot to frequently and carefully adjust stick input <laughs> and elevator trim. I ran out of fuel. <laughs> Let's see how the glider feels at different airspeeds. With gliders, expect a delay of one to two seconds from control input to change in speed. Okay. Let's increase airspeed to 167 kilometers per hour. Gently push the stick forward to pitch the I'm nose gonna wait till she stops speaking. as you observe the airspeed indicator. Right, she stopped speaking, so now let's do 167. This makes me want to go get some gliding lessons. The sounds are so good. At 167 kilometers per hour, pull back gently to maintain speed I'm not and trim yet. the elevator so that the glider maintains 167 I'll only trim per hour when she's finished talking. Input. Right now, I'm trimming. Now let's reduce our airspeed. Right. Bring the glider to 102 kilometers per hour. To reduce airspeed, I wait until she finishes talking. By pulling back on the stick. You need less input compared to pushing the stick forward. Leading off our airspeed will take a few moments. I was too quick last time. Right, she stopped talking, so 102. I won't trim this, okay? I'm not going to trim it. Oh, I'm fighting every instinct not to trim. <laughs> right, there's 102. Still not trimming. Don't tell me it's done it again. I've been delayed with my inputs as well. 102. Should I trim it? Right, I'm going to trim it. I think. Once you're at oh. 102 kilometers per hour. Maintain that airspeed at first by stick input, and then adjust trim so no input is necessary. Okay, so trimming now. But this is where we got stuck last time. Alright, I'm perfectly trimmed to the 102. Oh dear. Don't they beta test these? <laughs> I think... About one in ten of these missions I do, they always fail because you do it do it too quickly or something. But there we are, trimmed at 102. I'm making no input on the stick. We're perfectly in trim. Guys, I think we might have to abandon this. This is exactly what happened last time. Ah, right. Ooh. Let me just... There's a bit of a... Wind blust or a gust or something there. Uh, we will now take oh, a look at how it. to maneuver the glider in turn. Oh, finally. Unlike powered aircraft, gliders require considerable rudder input yeah, to I begin remember that. a turn. A vital indicator for turns is the red yaw string on the center of the canopy. We always want to keep it centered. Then we use just the right amount of rudder and ailerons for coordinated flight. To center a deflected string, apply aileron in the same direction or rudder in opposite direction of the deflected string. Okay. Let's see what happens to the yaw string if we try to bank the glider without any rudder input. Okay. Keep the rudder centered and slowly move the stick to the left, then to the right while observing the yaw string. Oh yes, it goes right and left. How long do I do this for? Happy now? Maybe I have to. Steer the glider to straight and level flight again. Yeah, she's happy. 
Let's see what happens if we use the rudder pedals only. Okay. Apply left rudder followed by right rudder without touching the stick. Just like before, watch what happens to the string. Right, here we go. It's a no stick input. Let me just get wings level. So left rudder. Uh, it's dropping though. Right rudder. Establish straight and level flight again. Okay. Now that you understand the use of the yaw string, let's perform a circle maneuver. To roll the glider, apply both aileron and rudder inputs simultaneously in the best. same direction. I was sick on my first gliding lesson. Well, well, not sick, degrees, I felt really sick. And keep the yaw string centered with the rudder throughout the turn. Okay. How many degrees the did you say? The glider will begin turning. To maintain the nose on the horizon, you might need to pull back slightly on the stick. Right. Roll the ailerons and rudder opposite of your turn to a wings level attitude. Okay. Let's attempt a left 360. Then level the wings and perform a 25 right 360. Fakes. There's no attitude indicator. Try to keep the yaw string centered while turning. Right, so heading 210, 360, we'll roll out on 210. So left, left, put a bit, left, ooh, a bit too much rudder. Oh, but, oh, it's really hard. Keeping 100, 100 kilometers an hour. A bit more rudder. Oh. Well, is that? Oh, yeah, I need to. Oh, my God, it's confusing. Ah! <laughs> oh, this is like much harder than I remember it being. Right, we'll roll out on 210. IFR capable glider. And do I go straight into my right one? Oh, let's do it. Right rudder. A little bit too much rudder there. God, it's quite hard. So very relaxing about gliding, though. I bet she's not going to be happy after my two turns. Train escape maneuver. <laughs> I think one of these guys has got a little electric motor on it. Right, I'll get ready to roll out on two one zero. Ooh. For now, let's return to the airport. She doesn't see me pressed. Basics and your skills will improve with practice. That's basically. You've done a great job. Okay. <laughs> oh, and hey, there you go. <laughs> I'll take it. 8,800. Uh, oh, what? Oh, get out of here. Almost a B look. Oof. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, Cotswold Gliding Cup has lots of gliders. I see them on flight radar. Yeah, they come up on there. Most of them have uh, transponders. Uh, Daniel Sykes, what CPU GPU is Use the command uh, exclamation mark uh, PC for all the specs. Thanks, Domino Bocina. Uh, right, training menu. Um, okay, that's another chunk of my gliding training complete. Uh, next is slipping approach and landing. Now, that, I remember this technique. If you get a bit higher or too high, you have the speed brake and then you, you jam in a load of rudder and opposite aider on in to get uh, lower. So, uh, yeah, okay, we'll just uh, lower left wing, position nose right. Right, let's, uh, let's see how we get on here. Uh, Philip, you were good, but be better. Exactly, that's what she was saying. <laughs> I think I've had a few instructors tell me that in the past. <laughs> Jack, what do you think of uh, the whole uh, gliding thing? Hmm? What do you think? Hmm? It's good fun, isn't it? I'm not sure if he's enjoying it. Oh, look, there's lots of thermals going on here. Right, ready to fly. Oh, am I? Pilots sometimes need to reduce altitude without gaining excessive speed. These thermals. Slipping is a technique to accomplish this. This technique can even allow a pilot to land a sailplane without air brakes. Yeah, look, look, look at these furballs. If they break or freeze during flight. Oh, that's good. To perform a slip, the pilot holds the nose to one side with rudder input, look. while lowering the opposite wing with ailerons. Okay. You may use either side for slipping, but it's easier to control. Thanks, hey, Scrubby Mike V. Welcome. Aileron into the crosswind. Okay. We have a left side crosswind. We need to lower the left wing with ailerons while yawing the nose to the right with the rudder. Understood. 
I will advise when to start the slip maneuver during your final approach. For now, fly closer oh, to the runway. Look. Commence the slip now. Okay. Start with right rudder. Now, apply left aileron to keep the glider on track. Uh. Now, in addition to slipping, apply full air brakes. The combination will quickly bring us onto our needed glide path. There you go. Look See at the speed. See how quickly we're approaching the normal glide path? Let's leave the slip now. That's so cool. When established, hold the pitch attitude by gently pulling back on the stick. Be aware that the glider will tend to speed up during this maneuver. Use your elevator to maintain approach speed. Well, I'm getting a bit high there, so I'll take a bit of rudder off. Which, ru which runway am I landing on? The main one? It's pretty cool. Now, look at that holding the speed really nicely. About 100 miles an hour. It's got f I haven't got full right rudder in at the moment. She, sh she said leave the slip, okay. Might just have to take a little bit of rudder off there though, because I don't want to get too slow. Alright, lined up the runway. Getting a bit too slow. What? Why is the rain going up? That's not rain. <laughs> Those are simulate thermals. You can if they've got the visualization visualization on. Fifty, forty. Thanks for uh, thirty, twenty. Whoever's donated 10, there. Uh, is my gear down? Yeah, gear's down. Gear's down. Thank you, are you okay for the one pound twenty? Who's ready to fly on a zip line? I am. Oh my goodness me. The zipline simulator coming up next. Thanks for the nation, buddy. When, 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 okay, well, I'll just land, I guess. Good job. See how simple and efficient the slip is? I'm landed yet. Return rudder and aileron to center position. Laugh! Keep the air brakes out as required for approach. Catch up, my lovely. <laughs> now continue the approach. We still have left crosswind and need to align with the runway. Um, I have. Slipping approaches take time to master, but are a great way to nail your landings. You now know the basics. Uh, I do. This is done by the same technique, but with less control input. You are on the right learning track. Oh, that's good. Let's train further to increase your proficiency. That is also a, you Use did okay, but... <laughs> right <rudder> <laughs> oh, what a great B! She had, even Microsoft Flight Simulator cut her off. <laughs> great B! Oh, well, unbelievable. Right, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just carry on. <laughs> right, verbal identification. We'll go over there next. <laughs> Uh, phone news, thanks for 41 months, says uh, Gumps. Is that an acronym I need to know in gliding? I have no idea. Thank you very much anyway. There was an acronym I remember using before landing. Uh, oh, I can't remember what it is. So it sounds familiar though. Uh, excellent. Right, look at these thermals here on this hot day. That's what you need. Hmm. Glider pilots need to continuously be on the lookout for the next thermal or other source of lift to stay aloft. Thermals are small diameter parcels of rising air. Always under a Gliders cumulus cloud. Fly in tight circles to stay within them. Cumulus clouds, which typically resemble Remember. cotton balls, are a good indicator of thermals as they often form above them. Thermals suited for lift often require pilots to search under a few cumulus clouds. The variometer is a vital tool Look for soaring. This device indicates a sailplane's rate of ascent and descent with audible tones. So you see we're, we're descending After at one meter per second, one meter per second. variometer's tones, you'll be able to know your climb rate without referencing other instruments. A variometer indicates a climb with an interrupted high pitch tone and descent with a continuous low pitch tone. Gear under the carriage mixture prop. As we prop, approach gump. the cloud, ah. listen closely to the variometer and be ready to turn That's in our active when thermal. its tone indicates lift. And these are all actually modelled, so when you have live weather, it'll actually look at... Uh, there you go. It'll actually look at cumulus clouds okay, and generate thermals. Okay, the variometer thermals. is indicating lift. Turn in and begin circling. Roll into a 45 degree bank and complete at least one circle. 
There you go. Look at the variometer go. A thermal strength typically requires completing at least one full turn within it. You can see we're climbing. Look, and this is the only way. When I did gliding, where I'm from in the UK, Lincolnshire, it's very flat, so ridge lift was never an option. So only thermal lift. Oh, we're sinking now. Well, that wasn't the best time to start a circle, but she said start. There we are. I'm good. This just reminds me of gliding so much. And then you can turn off this thermal visualization if you want for ultimate realism. So you do have to look out for those cumulus clouds. There we are. Look at that. <laughs> Climbing at six, seven meters per second. Let's search for a thermal under a neighboring cloud. Okay. Oh, it's in sync now. Where's a neighboring cloud? Look at that one there. A bit slow there. I need to get back to my. Ooh, centralize the rudder. Am I meant to be following the the one on the? She's assigned though. Fly to marker to enter the second thermal. Oh, thanks. She told me that. Right, this isn't efficient. Wee. So there's my altitude down there in feet, 3,300 feet. Now when we do this group flight in Cape Town, you guys need to decide if we do a winch launch or a aero tow. I think winch launch will be a bit more challenging, but we should try it. But look at the size of that, for that cumulus cloud there. Gosh, it's a lovely day in Germany for gliding. 3,400 feet. Welcome. Uh, thanks for subscribing there, Xenox. Hope you're doing well. Now we'll work on keeping your circles tight and smooth. Okay. Two important rules to follow are keep your speed low, between 93 and 102 kilometers per hour. Okay. Maintain a constant altitude, keeping a continuous 45 degree bank and the nose of the glider slightly above the horizon. Okay. I'll hold it about 100. Continue circling, maintaining a 45 degree bank angle and an airspeed between 93 and 102 kilometers per hour. Look at this go. Look at the, look at the altitude. Can you see it down there? 3,450 feet. Climbing. 3,490. I mean, you could literally fly all day if you get it right. We're not quite 45 degrees there. She's probably not going to be happy because I'm not exactly over the other circle. I'll go. I'll turn this way. Noises that you get from the on the glider is so good. Welcome. Three thousand six hundred feet. Welcome, Vusa Boyo. Hope you're doing well. I love anything to do with like efficiency, though. You know, trying to maintain the best glide speed or the best speed whilst doing this as well. Without an engine is an exhilarating experience of pure aviation so cool. freedom. You are proficient enough Absolutely, to practice Steve, these skills solo. Go ahead and continue perfecting these maneuvers in a single seater. Oh, let's do it. Great flying. She seems a bit better. Oh yeah, she's pleased. Uh, hey, and I've completed flight school. Excellent. Abby, how long do the thermals last in real life? Or Tension till the cumulus sort of develops into a rain shower and then it loses all of its energy. But you can get sink as well, which is the opposite uh, issue. Uh, right, training menu. Uh, what is next? We've got. Um, oh, where is it? Uh, here, 80. I think it's just one more lesson, guys, and then we'll go to Cape Town. Ridge soaring. So solo? 
Well, I don't know. Oh no, there's one more, one more lesson here. Ridge lift. I have no experience in this. Basically, just wind being blown up a mountain and utilising that. But make sure you don't go on the downward side because you're going to downdraft. The opposite problem. Oh yes, well we've read that. Having no engine equals freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the clangers on TV, absolutely. <laughs> Glided 2 0 November Fox Trot is bingo fuel. There we go. Well, not this solo yet. Your introduction to Ridge Lift Soaring. We just launched from Reedsville Airfield and are heading toward Jack's Mountain Ridge. Okay. At prevailing winds, the ridge will generate good lift. And that's why we're going to Cape Town today. The ridge extends over many miles. Because the prevailing wind is going up Table Mountain. For introduction. Let's fly directly to the ridge and follow it in a southwesterly direction. Okay. We have a tailwind on our route to the ridge, so we'll get there quickly. Am I meant to be as going soon down? As you recognize ascending air during our approach to the ridge, begin a right turn. We should go southwest. One of the cardinal rules of ridge soaring is to avoid the ridge's lee side due to downdrafts that often form in that region. Try to maintain as high a rate of speed as possible while flying oh, really? close to terrain, as it affords the most escape options. Ah, of course. Increase the speed until the vertical speed becomes zero, but stay below the yellow arc. Oh, okay. Steer well. the aircraft far enough into the crosswind to avoid drift toward the lee side. All right, I understand. We'll turn back in approximately five minutes when we're a beam of Belleville. So, so you want to keep a high Meanwhile, speed. This is all new to me. Speed. If it indicates a constant descent, we should try flying closer or farther from the ridge. So I'm watch not... for other traffic. Currently, we need to give way because the ridge is to our left-hand side. Ah. When traffic is approaching, turn right far enough to allow the traffic to pass. Then maneuver back to the ridge. What? What traffic? Oh, Jim's gone climbing as well today, so I'm going to keep descending into the the. Oh, God, I'm going a bit too fast here. A clangers? The clangers was on TV when I was a young boy. There, Blue Bear, <laughs> on Channel Four, I think. Right, so I'm sort of descending, but also keeping out of the yellow maneuver margin. You can see, look at the drift here, so I'm sort of flying here, but it's so cool that Microsoft Flight Sim have simulated how the wind goes up the terrain, and it's exactly how it's going to work later on our group flight after this. That's exactly how I've driven the glider I flew, the uh, Pukats. Uh, first of aircraft I flew solo in, Polish made uh, Pukats. Which I learned today is Polish for a, a, some, a sort of type of owl. So we're sort of holding a high speed, but we're sort of maintaining altitude. Well, no, we're actually descending, but the variometer is sort of showing us gaining altitude. But remember, this is ridge, ridge lift fly, or like this is completely new to me. Watch the speed. Just turn on autopilot. How? <laughs> So we're at 1,500 feet now. Oh, I just... We I... are at Beam Belleville. Let's turn back. Okay. Remember to turn away from the ridge. You're the boss. I've reset the altimeter. It was well out. <laughs> I feel like I should be a lot lower. I see guys doing this, and the mount is just off their left, uh, their wing. Yeah, my first gliding lesson, I, f I felt really sick afterwards. I was like, and I wanted, I remember, I was like, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> but I persevered, got better. Uh, Tracer, you can use the trim if, it, if it's annoying to constantly hold the stick up down. You probably know, but it uh, took me a while to figure out. Yes, it's all trimmed out there, uh, Crosser, it's all trimmed out. 
It's all trimmed down at whatever speed we're doing, about 180 kilometers now. I feel like I'm not getting the best lift here, though. Joshua, the crest of the ridge is where the lift is best, so if you want to do it quick, you should basically just fly along the ridge top. <laughs> Brilliant, Aaron. Oh, yeah, so N666 EO, you should be a lot slower. I don't know why she asked you to fly so fast. Yeah, I presumed you just fly at your best speed, which is, I think, uh, the, the best glide speed is this little yellow arrow. This is not very efficient, I don't think. Yeah, exactly, Joshua. I want to be nice and low by the ridge. We are gaining altitude, though. Look. We'll sort of... Oh, not anymore. We were for a second. I don't know if this is the best way of doing this, but uh, anyway, when I was doing it in Cape Town, I was getting ridiculous ridge lift. <laughs> what is it what I'm going to be doing, Wipong? To climb fast, you should fly the best climb speed, a bit lower than the best glide speed. I don't know what that is. We are slowly climbing here, though. Look. I'm just going to go towards the, the point of interest. I, d I feel like I should have been down here. Oh, I'm getting a better pushback here. Andrew, on my first gliding lesson, the winch cable snapped and I felt very unwell too. Yeah, that happened to, uh, not the winch, the aero tow cable. Well, the, the aircraft towing us had a loss of power, so they started waving their wings at about 400 feet. So we had to land straight ahead in a field. Well, I'm just going to go towards the point of interest now. Yeah, for thermals, I mean, this is different to 0 3 this is This is ridge lift, but thermals, yeah, we used to fly around at the, the best speed. This is Highway 322. Oh. Let's return to the airport. It's off your left wing. Great flying. You can definitely explore ridge soaring on your own now. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. You can also go up for another round if you aren't comfortable. No, we we want to go to Cape Town with the guys. <laughs> And girls. Another round of training should bring improvement. Oh, but, <sighs> can make your mind up. One second, you're. What? Oh, ah, 50, I, don't, I don't even know 40, what I've done. <laughs> 30, 20, 10. Michael Schmidt, thanks a lot for the two euros. One second praising me, and then gives me a great C. FD2S is always amazing, even without engines. <laughs> Thanks, Michael Schmidt, for the two euros. Appreciate that. That was very hot slash cold from the instructor. Um, seems more training's required. Uh, Lust for keyboards. I think you need to change that to bronze medals. <laughs> oh, look at this! Outrageous. Fly back along the ridge. Didn't even let me allow allow me to do that. Oh, guys, should we go to Cape Town? Do some gliding. Right. What I'm going to do is uh, go to the menu. Uh, have I actually, if I go to training menu here, 88% mastered. Oh, is that because I didn't get, yeah, I didn't get full marks. Well, look, I've completed the course. It's a pass. Uh, it's a pass. So what we're going to do is go back to the uh, the main menu and we're going to set up for the uh, flight in Cape Town. So guys, make sure you go onto the Microsoft Flight Sim servers. You want to be on the North uh, West Europe server, I think it is. Let me just double check the one I'm on. Oh, sorry, uh, West Europe server. Uh, world map. And we're going to go down to Cape Town. Now, we are going to stream a little bit behind live time. And this is where we're going to depart here. Uh, it's called uh, Robin Island. I just want to see what the wind's doing first. So 3.11 at 17. We're going to want to take off off this runway. We're on 3.4. So let's just uh, select the glider. I'm going to do the single-seater glider because it's the one I used on the uh, practice flight. So let's go here to uh, gliders and we'll go for this one, the LS818. So we'll click that and uh, liveries. Oh yeah, I haven't even changed that. Well, we'll just go with the stock one. Uh, so we'll close. Nico's already there, look. Um, set for departure. And we're just going to go here. All players off live. I'm going to make it uh, at live time when I jump into the uh, the sim. So let's press uh, 
fly. Oh, guys, uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to quickly nip to the toilet. We're going to do a very quick poll, okay? Launch method. You can. We can either do the aero tow. We'll go up to about 2,000 feet or do the winch launch. We'll just do a generic one. Let me decide what you'd like to do. I'll put you in the be right back uh, screen whilst you vote for that. So let me just uh, set up the poll here uh, in the background. So poll, start a poll. It'll just be winch or aero tow. Uh, winch, aero tow. I can't remember if it's all one word or not, but I've put it as two uh, as two different words. Um, I'm going to have a very quick three or four minute break to the toilet uh, I've asked you guys now you decide on what you want to do and then when I get back in we'll jump into the uh, simulator here on runway 34 with the option selected and then you guys can decide what to do as well I'll see you about uh, three or four minutes guys quickly vote No, he still is. Look, he's just uh, wondering what on earth I'm doing. He's staring at the rudder pedals, thinking, "What are those things that uh, Daddy's uh, moving there?" But uh, anyway, uh, that was very close. It's going to be the winch launch. Go, oh, 52%, 47%. So what we'll do, we'll select runway three, four. Uh, here we'll go to launch. Let's go for the uh, Sobo ESW2B launch. Now press close. Now press fly. And let me just open up. Uh, Navigraph here and also get the fly live overlay because we are going to be flying a, a sort of mini sector here uh, It's all action stations and so Let me show you here where we are on at Navigraph. I have no idea why that's not coming up on the screen. Welcome Ah, there we go. So here we are uh, loading into the sim. Here's Navigraph. So we're going to be coming into the small island, Robin Island Village. So let me just move this over here. All right, I'm just going to press ready to fly. And uh, let me just turn off the old variometer for a second. Uh, so I've no idea what all these alarms are. Uh, and we're just going to go back to about midday today. So there's quite a strong northwesterly wind today. Um, there's lots of other people here. There'll be gliders all on top of us. We're all ready for the uh, tow launch here. And I've got this amazing scenery for Cape Town. It's a bit cloudy, so hopefully um, the clouds will clear up. But um, we can just do a quick visualisation. <laughs> there's a volocopter. Show 3D thermal. Um... Okay, so we've got some thermals coming up here because it, it, it sort of simulates the temperature and a bit of lift. So it's coming off of Robin Island and all these lovely cumulus clouds, which is pretty good. And um, we're going to fly from here. Turn on moving maps. There we go. Uh, from Robin Island towards uh, Cape Town. And 
This is towards Table Mountain. Oh, it always resets. I don't know how to stop it from not resetting. But here's Table Mountain. And then once we get to Table Mountain, we're going to have to use Ridge Lift Dive, guys, because we're going to go all the way. We're going to land at Cape Town International Airport just for banter. We have to have Ridge Lift. If we don't, we'll never make it. So hopefully there'll be good Ridge Lift. And that's uh, uh, fingers crossed for that then. So let's close that here. I think Fly Live should be working as well. So you can get some uh, stats for this flight too. Let me just get the... Um, information for the uh, route in so we are departing from Robin Island Airport which I, I don't know if it has a code or not oh I can't see it on the uh, map here anyone know what the code is for Robin, <laughs> Robin Island Airport oh that's really annoying we might not be able to do it because it doesn't have a code on on the sim or in Navigraph there's a waypoint called Deglu Oh, it has got a code, F-A-E-U. Thank you very much. Let's see if it comes up, though. And no, it doesn't recognise it in Fly Live, unfortunately, so I'll have to uh, disregard that. So anyway, we'll just keep, keep an eye on what's going on with the rest of it. Right, can we have our togas in chat? Uh, we are about to lift off. Let me jump into the uh, cockpit here. So, again, I need to wave my wings to let Jim know we're flying. We've got, oh, I've got beavers here and everything, so waving my wing. There he is. Off we go. Ah, oh, these beeping sounds. Turn on my variometer. Get ready to pull the winch launch. And we're away. And that's taken us up to a height of... Uh, a thousand feet, guys. A thousand feet. What's all these beeping sounds? There's more beeping sounds than I had when I last flew multiplayer. <laughs> Are these other... Oh, look at you all! <laughs> oh, look at that! <laughs> that is awesome! <laughs> oh, look at these guys! <laughs> right, uh, right, we need a thermal. Uh, right, I hope... I, I hope we get a thermal. I think it could be other people's variometers in multiplayer. I think it could be, because these are all new sounds. Right, we're already in a thermal, look. We're already in a thermal. I tried to remember everything the lady told me. Oh, I need to get the gear up. Don't forget to raise your gear, guys, in the glider. See if anyone else is doing a better job. No, you're all lower than me. <laughs> oh, look at this, we've got a massive thermal here. Well, what is the use of the yaw string? Tells you how much rudder you need to be using. Why? <laughs> Why can I hear a million variometers going off? <laughs> Domino Mosin is just behind me. Right, I think we need to get a little bit more height here whilst we're over the island. We're nearly at two. F we need doubled our height here. It's like a mega thermal. Let me just turn on the visualization for a second. He's not in a glider. He's cheating. Show 3D thermals. Look at that! It's a huge thermal here on the island. Look at us circling around here. Right, how much height? I think one more circle, we might have enough height here. This is live weather, by the way, guys. There's the Table Mountain ahead. I'm nowhere near my best glide speed here. If this is realistic, you'll run out of lift before you hit the cloud tops. Okay. <laughs> These sounds. 2,400 feet. I'm out the thermal now. I can hear it. see a volocopter. This is superb. Although the... Let me just turn mine off. So that beeping, I think, is other people's variometers. Unless there's some weird beeping going on here in mine. I'll turn it all off and on again. Look at this, guys. Some people are getting a lot of height like me, look. Chicken Tikas in a powered aeroplane. Right, and the good news is we've got Tailwind as well. So how high are we now? We're up to 2,700 feet. I've never seen a film this strong in my life. What have we done here? 
Oh, look, you can see all the other gliders on here. <laughs> right, there's 3,000 feet, guys. I think we should make it towards the mainland now. What's VMD of a glider? I think this one is the little blue arrow. I, I, I'm half guessing that. So I'd say about 90-ish miles an hour. Right. We're going to be an IMC soon. Right, let's head towards uh, Cape Town. Look at you guys all trying to get lift, but it seems to be working. Make sure you turn on live weather, but also bring the time back to this time as well. I mean, I'm so confident with this, I'm going to do a loop, let the guys catch up. Oh, I can't see the horizon, that's horrible. We're doing some aerobatics as well. And gliding. Look at that. Alright, let's bleed off that speed. I'll try I don't wanna I don't wanna go over on my own in case I mess this up. Well I'm meant to be using more way more rudder in the turns to coordinate coordinate this here. Can you set the flaps to uh, negative for racing? Hey! Oh look, there was a glider just going... Oh, well, look at that! <laughs> They're all reaching the same height. That's awesome. Right, let's go. We'll follow Absolute Sloth, who's not sloughing at all. <laughs> right, let's go towards Cape Town, guys. Amazing. Some guys have got loads of height. Right, don't forget, we've got to make it to Cape Town International Airport, guys, so... Have I... Hope, let's hope we get some thermals on the way to Cape Town here. Now, this is the Orbex uh, City Pack scenery, but there's a, an amazing free, web, free web bit of scenery that it basically enhances Table Mountain with Google imagery. It looks so realistic coming up. It looks so good. Alright, no, that's not good. We're now in sync. Let's hope we've... Uh... Let's get back to our best glide speed because we're going way too fast here. Look at that. What's all this beeping? It's like an additional beep, which I have no idea what it is. Right, we're trimmed down at our new best glide speed. <laughs> oh, it's beeping. Welcome. Still got a few people trying to gain some height. Got a few people trying to get over here. What is that secondary beeping? So annoying. Oh, oh, it's TCAS. Ah, how do I turn that off? <laughs> okay, seems to be no one near here now. I don't know how well modelled this is. I can't even turn it off. Right, we're in constant sort of sync here. Oh, we all know we sort of be uh, holding the altitude. Use knobs. Sounds like a McDonald's restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! So cool. Yeah, it's my tea cat, isn't it? I can't unfortunately turn off. Oh, here it is. It's down here. Look, transponder. Mode altitude. I'll put up mode standby. No, that doesn't seem to have fixed it. There's no one near me. We've got someone in a G Goose 21. We've still got guys trying to gain some height in their thermals. We've got Leon coming at high speed in his glider. So good. Right, uh, yeah, we need to sort of get some lift soon. So I think if we look over here, the wind is coming from behind us. So what should be happening, and it worked on the test sector. There was a nice amount of wind blowing up the mountain, giving us this uh, ridge lift here. Uh, so let's just have a little look. Uh, wait, I'll just show you briefly, show 3D thermal. So you can see, look at that. As soon as we get over land, because there's not usually much heat generated from the sea, but over land, when you've got the sun on it, you get a huge amount of lift. Look at all the thermals coming off from uh, Cape Town there. 
<laughs> Someone in his grubber goose. We've got Nico down there in his glider. Slowly le losing height. So look, we, it's a good job we actually gained some height over Robin Island. Otherwise, we'd never have made it. Little Bandits is constantly losing height as well. We're constantly losing height. You can hear the variometer going off. Apparently, if you start on a runway rather than in flight, the beep shut up. So I just read. Okay. So look at that. Approaching Cape Town, we are at a height of 2,000... 600 feet. Let's see how high we can go. We want to. I want to fly right along Table Mountain here. We'll turn the visualizations off, but we're going to get some huge thermals coming up soon. Oh, I wish I could turn that. If anyone could look online to shut up the TCAS, that would be appreciated. Look at this here. Doesn't that look absolutely stunning? That's a, oh, look at Ostron and his goose. He's got his full flaps out and he's managing to fly. What are we doing? 120 kilometers an hour? About 60 knots. Oh, he's about to stall though. <laughs> Turn the flam off. Flam is the glider TCAS. Where's the button for that? Oh, okay, that was a mega thermal. <laughs> That made me jump! <laughs> ah, yeah, you can actually see it going green, look. Look at that for a firm. Whoa! Look at the height go up. These are these are incredibly overpowered, I feel. I never saw thermals like this, even on hot days. Well, there's Cape Town down below. Top right middle screen, I think. So sure. Look at it. Look at the scene. Doesn't that look absolutely stunning? So this is fully. Uh, he's got two versions. The guy who made the. Uh, it's a knob. <laughs> the knob. The knobs. <laughs> there are the middle screen. There are four knobs in each corner. Use one of them to scroll between pages. Oh, the middle screen. Don't need that. God, there's quite a lot of... Ah, okay. You can see a lot of gliders. There's so many people below me. Oh, they're struggling down there. We do need more height, though, to make it to uh, Cape Town International Airport. We're at 2,900. Top middle screen. The screen above... Oh, the... Okay, the screen... The top one... Okay. Pass more on the centre screen and click the bottom left of the centre screen. <laughs> uh, rip FPS. Transponder. Pressing transponder. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into the side of Table Mountain if I'm not concentrating here anymore. Ah, flam. Uh, doesn't seem to do anything. Is there a button for it? I, I lose my variometer if I do that though. Who needs a variometer? We've got a manual one. <laughs> so look at this one here. We'll go old school. So you can see how the wind's drifting. Because there's the, there's the uh, winch look that takes you up to Table Mountain. Oh, rip FPS. Struggling there. Still heard it going off. Oh, put, oh, put, oh my god, this guy's. This is hard. Bottom, it's there. Okay, it's in German. Oh no, what have I done now? Right, we're gonna go off over towards the city again. Whilst we turn this off. We're seeing we're getting so much height in thermals here. No, 3,000 feet. Right, it's not a button, it's a knob to turn. Right, let me just press select. 
select. Ah, okay, I see. This this is this is turning not from a gliding fl flight. It's working out how to turn this poxy thing off. I see these are. Oh, ah, I'm doing things. Oh. Report. Yeah, turn off TCAS. <laughs> Can't see where I'm going, guys. It's pretty steady, though. Aha. Oh, stopwatch. I think... I think I think we'll just have to deal with it, guys. It's it, it's it's a cool tool, but I'll just. Oh, you can't even turn it off. TCAS is permanently on. <laughs> oh well, fine. Let's just enjoy the gliding. We've done all right uh, so far. Uh, so I think we're gaining an. Oh no, let's go back towards Table Mountain because we still need more height to make it towards Cape Town. Well. We could probably make it here with thermals, but I just want to guarantee it. So let's just go towards Table Mountain and do that there. Still climbing here. Some guys up there, look. Volocopters. Gliders are gaining a lot of height there. You can see where they're climbing at like 3,800. Love is in the air, is slightly descending. Let's go back towards Table Mountain. Con race is in a Pilatus. That is not great for... Is that Pilates? I can never remember. Not the best for gliding in. <laughs> He's about to stall. Uh, Steve Vogler, this is your hometown, awesome. You missed the after takeoff checklist. What, gear up? I did it. Is there a shortcut to turn off TCAS, perhaps? Maybe Microsoft have a default command for it. Right, we're going to go right along Table Mountain here. Just show you the, the visualisation quickly of the, the uh, ridge lift and the thermals. Look at that. See the wind's coming from this direction. It's also... What, is it the lion's head, this one? can't remember here, but look at a huge amount of ridge lift coming in from, from the wind here. And a little bit in this direction, so what we're going to do is quite fly quite close to Table Mountain. Can you imagine? I don't think they're allowed to do this in real life. <laughs> no one, someone else had a grubber goose. They're really struggling to stay close, though. Look at look at this uh, lift here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's with the sink. Get a bit closer. Whoa, there's also down drafts as well. Whoa. Ridge waves are simulated to uh, Pat Laros. That's what we're trying to utilize here. Can't wait to try this Toby Eye Tracker out. There's someone in a dash, <laughs> uh, a twin otter there. All right, let's try and get a bit more height. See if we can at least get higher than the Table Mountain. Headrest looks comfy. I oh, know my head's on it. What do you guys think of the uh, update? It's it's awesome. Look out! Uh, there'll be pro some proper glider pilots that that'll try this out and give you much feedback. Remember, it's been 15, 16 years since I've flown a glider. I think this is probably not the best place to get ridge lift either. I think it's probably the other side of Table Mountain. I feel there should be down drafts right there. The w where, yeah, the wind. You might be right because the wind's coming down the other way. The quality of this.
Yeah, I think the, the lift's going to be around here because the wind's coming from the right. Yep, that's where it all is. Look. Oh my goodness, look at that! <laughs> oh, it keeps doing this default thing. Oh, I've got, oh, okay, watch my nose there. That was a huge amount of bridge lift. Alright, don't turn towards the mountain. Ugh, bit of sink there. Look at this go. But it's amazing how it simulates all this. The wind, guys, is coming from this direction. From from the island, it's pretty much a direct tailwind. We're also at the same height as uh, Table Mountain. Look at this! You can actually see it going up! <laughs> it's so cool. Right, I think we're gonna pass there and back and then we can make our way towards Cape Town International. So much fun. Look at this, look how much height we're gaining now. It's getting confused with the TCA sound. This in VR would be amazing. You know, I'm doing my best with the joystick to look around. There's the cable car. <laughs> Look at this go up! This is superb! Yeah, this isn't stock Microsoft Flight Sim scenery here. This is a freeware add on. Uh, all the inf information is in the video description, and then I've got the Orbex Payware City Packs. Oh, we're getting, we're getting some. Don't forget, the cable release was at. Um, how high was it? 1,500 feet, and we're at 3,700. We've, uh, you know, we've more than doubled our, how our height. Look at that! Look at how much height we've gained. Careful, don't, don't get on the leeward side. No. No, we're going to stay above. Look at that! Flying a long table mountain here. <laughs> so cool. Right along the top of Table Mountain. It's, it's just wicked. Uh, might have to be default scenery. Yeah, well, this is completely free to download, uh, Stephen Hay Hayner. This this scenery here is about two gigs. Just put it in a community folder. Look at that! Absolutely stunning. Right there, guys. I think we've gained enough height to get to Cape Town International Airport. Let's have a little look at Navigraph. Uh, so we just whoa, we just need to head east. Look, directly east, and it's there. We should have more than enough height now. Welcome. Absolutely stunning. I can't believe we utilised real-world weather to get some lift off table mountain there absolutely superb look at the, some of these guys are these guys in gliders mxs i think they're in gliders look he's up at 4700 feet look we're on the we're on the leeward side now look it's here look at that sink so the wind goes down the mountain on the opposite side and they've they've modeled that as well ignoring the tcas going off but look at the sink here look at look at look how much sink there is It's, it's exactly as it would be. New lands to your right. What's that there? Stadium's down there as well. Awesome. I think you can glide in an X-Plane, Lawrence. I've never tried it, though. Sort of using Navigraph here, but Cape Town International should be. It's getting a bit cloudy. Over here in the cloud. Most of you guys are catching up. We've got someone in a glider right next to us. Oh, C B Bumblebee needs a bit more lift. So cool. Look at that. 
I mean, point, would you currently uh, recommend Microsoft Flight Simulator X-Plane 11? Yeah, I mean, at the moment with X-Plane 12 in its development phase, you're going to get a lot more fun out of it, uh, this this sim, and, and the Sobra obviously got the backing of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mean, this, this sim's getting better day by day. I mean, I, I'm... I'm in, uh, Look at it. And it's accurate... Things like this are actually, but I don't know if the, the gliders are great or don't know. I mean, the the turn rate does seem a bit slow. I remember glider it could be a bit quicker than snap round, but 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 this is, you know, I think this is an area that, that could be addressed in time. Yeah, for me right now, this is my my sort of preferred sim, and not discounting X plane at all. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm hoping to jump back into the zebra bot next stream. Uh, do some uh, cat three approaches. They're very foggy in certain parts of Europe. Um, need to do some practice ones because it's getting. Good, good for me to do it uh, in the sim before doing it on the line. Well, I say that. I did two auto lands the other day, but uh, just to show you and remind me of all the, the rules and procedures. Right, looks like Cape Town International is obscured in cloud. We were up at 3,000, 700 feet. We've lost about 500 feet going here. I'm nowhere near my best glide speed. Look. So let's just get back to that first. I've not been flying accurate at all. Let's get that re-trimmed really out. Yeah, in hindsight, I wish I knew how to disable this transponder. Look, some of you guys have gone so high. So cool. Is it normal to not glide at your glide speed? I think it's quite normal, Pascal, to stay at this speed here. This speed here is sort of like your minimum drag speed. Any faster, you're going to have too much parasitic drag. Any slower, you're going to have induced drag uh, caused by the you know gen generation of lift. Um, so it's best to stay at your minimum drag speed. Well, I, I think, is it VMD that speed in your glider representative? I can't remember, but it's, it's the most efficient speed to be at. Ugh, bit of IMC ahead. Cape Town. <laughs> Look at this, guys. This is crazy. Look how many people are around. Awesome. Is Wake Turbine Simulator now? I don't think so, Petro. There's Cape Town International. Oh, we are going to easily make that. Right, we need to choose the runway to land on, though, because uh, we've got those westerly winds. So we're going to land on the shorter runway, runway 3-4. Here's Navigraph, look. So we're just here. What we'll do, we'll, we'll fly a downwind, uh, left-hand downwind, and land on runway 3-4. Cape Town Control is going to be busy tonight. Oh yeah, I wouldn't don't do anything like this on VATSIM, guys. This is just fun on the Microsoft Flying Sim servers. I, you could turn off the beeps of the new assistance options menu on the main menu of the sim. Well, that might uh, disable the variometer, but uh, the TCAS beeps is what I want to get rid of. There is Cape Town International down there anyway. There's Table Mountain in the distance. The quality of that add-on. Look, I mean, look at this. It's absolutely stunning. That's uh, completely free to download as well. Oh, we got more than enough height here. We've got aircraft circling around all over the place. Well, now because we don't need to gain height, what I can actually do is actually turn this off. There you go. Don't need the variometer anymore. Ah, peace and quiet. So cool. <laughs> Backed out, is about to release a sigma about uh, approaching mosquitoes in Francois. Also, uh, I'll, I'll look at that for the next one list a bit, but thanks for, for finding out. Donna Mosina, you need to get a bit more height there, he's still losing height. One of the, uh, one of the mods. Well, we need to be, gain, uh, lose a bit of height, so let's uh, remember that, uh, what the lady said, so... We can use the uh, spoilers. Oh, it's so effective. Look, if I just want to maintain the speed, we're going to go right rudder, left aileron. So we're sort of heading in this direction, where my mouse arrow is. We're downwind on runway 3 4. Still can't turn these beeps off. Look at that, it's holding about 110 kilometers an hour. You can see the speedo on the right hand side there, and we're we're probably drop we're dropping like a brick. Oh, 
What an awesome update. So much fun. This good sir is trying to lose height. Absolute sloth has been with me the whole time. Superb. Ah, plus uh, zero, three, four. There it is, three, four. Oh, it's starting to rain. Still got full right rudder and uh, left data on here. Can you do a low pass a circle to land? <laughs> let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Do you want me to do a loop? High speed pass on a loop. <laughs> Try and convert the energy. I mean, if uh, is it Bob Hoover that could do that in a powered aeroplane? Surely I could do it in a glider. <laughs> right. Do a low pass, just to go, uh, go to the v &E off the deck, then pull up and do a circuit. That, I know, I've seen someone do that at the gliding club I learned to fly. Right. Hope I don't break the wings off here. Uh, I think, I've, have I lost too much height though? Right, let me get back to my best glide speed. No, I think we're okay. I'll get back to, back to my best glide speed. It's flipping TCAS. Yeah, I've, oh, we've got loads of height. Right, so we're at our best glide speed, which is the blue arrow. Oh, look at the rain on the on the on the uh, canopy! It looks so good. Right, I'm, I'll try not to exceed VNE here. That's the red arrow, 270 kilometers an hour. Oh my god, where we go? It's 200 kilometers an hour. 250. And up we go. <laughs> oh, let's see if I can roll it level. Oh no, that's not gone very well. <laughs> right, we'll break down wind here. Uh, yeah, I've got no experience to do that. Right. The thing is, you, this, the, the efficiency of these machines now, they're super light, extremely clean, very little drag. You know, as I mentioned, you've got a glide ratio of something like 1 in 50. So you could fly 50 kilometers and just uh, lose a thousand meters. Now, the height we're at here uh, is, what's that, Three, 300 meters above the ground there? I mean, it's I don't know what the, the elevation is here. Um, so, you know, you can, you can go a serious distance, a serious distance. Right, let's, uh, let's go base leg. It's just been so much fun, just returning to the roots. Imagine a person doing a realistic flight from Cape Town right now whilst being invaded by gliders. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, got, oh, I've, uh, yeah, I've also got a headwind here, so I, might, I don't want to overcook this. Right, I'll drop the gear now. Oh, do I have to have a power to drop the gear? Surely, I thought that would just be gravity. No, you need the battery on to drop the gear. There it is, gear's down. Oh my goodness me. I have our balloon fly next. <laughs> right, let's get the okay, a bit more height. Yeah, Nico is just ahead of us there. Right, speed brakes out. Maintaining about a hundred and ten. I've got a little bit of rudder. Oh, no, don't want to do any more than that. He's Nico's got it. Look, he's using a bit of a size slip, but I don't think I need any. Look, he's holding a hundred knots really nicely there. There's a volocopter right ahead of us. I don't like metric, yeah, I'm missing my feet. There's gliders everywhere. There we are, keeps... Oh, not quite a butter, <laughs> but we're down. On runway 3, 4, Cape Town International. Keep the wings level, keep the wings level. We'll try and get next to TDG Tim. Keep the wings. Oh, there's so many more of you. Look, it doesn't show everyone here. 
DC3 doing a belly landing. <laughs> Gliders everywhere. There we are. Brad, someone's going to come and pick all these gliders up. <laughs> so around 194 movements uh, total in less than an hour. <laughs> Here comes Legend 3619. Love is in the air. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Steady, sir. We've got DC3's ground looping. We've got beavers. We've got random log 79. Still got plenty of energy. <laughs> so cool. Volocopters. We've got someone. Tintin. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of Thunderbirds and Thunderbird 6. Who remembers that? The yellow uh, um, um, tiger moth. Or oh, is it his Curtis Jenny? <laughs> that's so, so good. Awesome stuff, guys. Well, listen, that's it for today. It was just a sort of introduction to gliders, but had uh, great fun. We've got lots of awesome aircraft available. I mean, look. Come on, centerline trafficking. You've got to give me that. Um, there's so many cool aircraft on this update as well. I mean, I know there's the uh, Spruce Goose, which we'll probably look at next. Which You know, it's it's a bit of fun. The engines aren't probably the, the best modelled or anything like that. But we could probably try and replicate a bit of a, a fun flight in that next. It's something a bit different. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was really good fun. To, it's been a long time since we've done a group flight like that. Uh, but the thing is, the gliders, I think, are reasonably well modelled. You've got thermal lift you can use. You've got ridge lift you can use based off the actual weather conditions looking at the terrain that was really quite enjoyable um, and you can actually have a lot of fun uh, sort of flying a glider as you would in real life oh my god that was a, a high-speed glider there goes Nick Shad uh, but yeah it's available for free in the latest uh, 40th anniversary update uh, so yeah go grab that and try out the gliding lessons and uh, no doubt there'll be some well-modeled gliders available in the uh, in the future. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for everyone that uh, donated for your contribution. Very much appreciated. To all the members for your continued support as well and to all the regular viewers and subscribers. Thank you very much for tuning in uh, to something a little bit different. Jack just yawned. Bless him. Look, I think he wants his uh, his dinner. Oh, look, he's literally just licking his lips there. Uh, so I'll go get him fed. Oh, he's yawning too. And now he's sulking because I'm ignoring him. <laughs> Guys, thank you for everything you do. And uh, I'll see you on the uh, next live stream very uh, soon. Good night.